Hi everyone, it's Don once again with another video for you. This is video number 136. I'm out here at the Richmond Dog Park. You'll see my two dogs running around on occasion. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the new Oak Hollow Golf Course and the construction work that's just now started on it. We'll also take a look at Middleton, Eastport, Moultrie Creek, and a bunch of the commercial areas under construction here in the villages, as well as the residential properties here in the villages of Richmond that are under construction. So, without further ado, let's get started. Let's continue following the dream. Our first stop on this video is going to be at the north end of the villages. We've got three sites we're going to go look at. The first one is Blondie's. As you can see, there's a lot of construction going on here. No date has been set yet on when it's going to be open. Blondie's is taking its inspiration from Sawgrass Grove and the success that they've had down there with the open air bars. There's a lot of revamping going on in Spanish Springs, and with Blondie's, it will be interesting to see how they handle the situation where people come in and camp out at the tables and don't buy anything. That was a big part of the downfall for Katie Bells. This is the Cordoba Recreation Area and Postal Station. As you can see, the pool is open. This opened up about two weeks ago. They've started clearing the land for the houses that are going to go there. I believe it's 25 or 26 courtyard villas. We'll slide around a little bit to the left here, and this is going to be the pro shop that's replacing the old one for the golf course. That's Hobby Lobby at the top of the screen, and this is the big mystery lot. I have some insight on what's going here, but until I find something written down or on a website that actually confirms what I think, I'm not going to start rumors. But it is something that's coming. That much I do know. Off in the distance here, we have some apartments. These are not assisted living apartments. These are not age-restricted apartments. And you can see there's some open lots in the back. It looks like they're going to add even more apartments there. This is going to add a tremendous amount of traffic to this area that's already very busy. We'll rotate around so you can get some reference. That's Hobby Lobby and Red Lobster. We'll rotate around a little bit more and that's Fresh Market. And we continue to rotate around and you'll see PetSmart and some other stores. Now for a quick non-profit moment. The second annual spring thing is coming back. Millennium Park, March 23rd, 2024, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you're interested in being a sponsor or a vendor, contact one of the two phone numbers at the bottom of the screen. And yes, you will be able to get there by golf cart. More information coming soon. Let's head south now to what's quickly becoming the middle of the villages. And we'll look at a couple of sites here. First up is Edna's. Edna's is coming along quickly. The new kitchen and food prep area looks almost done on the exterior. Obviously, there's a lot of fitting out that's got to happen on the interior before it's ready to open. But at the rate they're going, maybe another two months, and it'll be open, and this will be a nice addition to the area. Again, I think people are going to miss the food trucks. They were kind of nice because they could quickly change up the food by just changing out the truck. This is the location for Harry and the Natives, next to the Okahumpka Recreation Center. You can see they've brought in a crane and some other equipment to start work. A couple of weeks ago, they had a ceremonial start of work. They shoveled a few shovels of dirt and made a big to-do of it for the newspaper. And we're just waiting for things to really start happening. This restaurant is going to have a really nice view of Lake Okahumpka. Let's face it, we're not as young as we once were. Climbing those old-fashioned attic stairs to get the Christmas decorations down or to stow those family treasures is just too dangerous. Magic stairs is the safer alternative. Real steps with safety rails at a safer angle and safety rails in the attic provide the safest attic access available. Having troubles getting things to and from the attic? The Magic Attic Lift can be there to help. Designed by Villages resident Ron Burner, every Magic Stairs and Magic Attic Lift is custom built in their Ocala, Florida factory and installed by their technicians. Why take chances? For less than the cost, cost of one emergency room visit, you can have Magic Stairs installed in your home. Magic Stairs, the safer, more convenient alternative. Now let's head just a little bit north to the area of Richmond that's under construction. 
This is going to be two new subdivisions, a set of, it looks like, courtyard villas, and a set of either designer or veranda homes. They've started putting in the water pipes here. I did want to correct one mistake I made in the last video. I had mentioned that a Chipotle was going in next to McDonald's, not far from here, and that it was something new. I was corrected. There is another Chipotle up on 27441. As we continue south, you'll see that they're doing a bunch of digging and that there's a bunch of purple pipes and light blue pipes. The purple are for reclaimed water, the light blue are for potable water. Based on the way they're progressing, it looks like maybe late summer these homes will start going up for sale. It's time now for another Then and Now segment. We'll start this Then and Now segment at the intersection of Warm Springs Avenue and the Florida Turnpike. And we're going to fly south along the Turnpike, looking at the eastern side of the Turnpike and all that's changed here. Now you can see, this is the village of Hawkins on the right. There was nothing there. There was no Bradford. Pretty much, well, actually Bradford was just getting started. And not much else was going on. There was a lot of clearing done. The retention ponds were in. But it was a barren time. Remember, this was at the peak of COVID on the then segment. That was May of 2020. Not a lot was happening around here. There was actually a lot of building. The developer made the decision to continue building instead of laying people off, which saved literally thousands of jobs and families. And they sat on inventory. They sat on inventory for nearly a year and built up nearly a thousand homes that they ended up clearing out eventually once things broke with COVID. On the left, you can see they were just starting to put in the water mains and they had laid out part of the roadbed for Megasin Road. Of course, now Megasin is a very heavily traveled road and an essential part of this part of the villages. Looking at the segment on the left, it's very barren. But remember, before the villages started clearing this, this was all pasture land and there was no water here, other than a few minor ponds in the village of Hawkins. I'm Angelo Darby, the director at Renaissance Hearing Center. At Renaissance Hearing Center, we specialize in resolving your hearing health care concerns. Our operating philosophy is get to know each patient, appreciate each patient, and treat each patient like he or she were a member of your own family. You moved here for the lifestyle. Don't let hearing loss stop you from enjoying that lifestyle to the fullest. We've helped hundreds of patients already, and we can help you too. The green berm on the left was the only part of the golf course that had been built when the May of 2020 video was shot. In fact, you can see the truck path going right through the middle of the golf course. Of course, now we have the beautiful Southern Oaks Golf Course, and it's very nice. I still haven't played it. I just as soon not sacrifice the balls to the water. That's the village of Case and Hammock on the right, and on the left, you can see a couple of trees up there. That's where the pitch and putt is, and the mail station for St. Catharines. Now let's take a look at the difference between the two bridges. Mind you, these were both shot at the same altitude, about 300 feet, and the same distance. Big, big difference in the size of the two bridges. The white truck on the picture in the left that's pulled off on the side of the road is me. On the right, I'm just off the traffic circle that's on McNeil Drive. And no, in this video, I never flew over the turnpike. I did fly over Bexley Trail, but I was standing nearby so I could make sure there was no traffic. Along the turnpike, I was about 100 feet off the road and not flying directly over the traffic. This was actually a very technically challenging flight because it's multiple flights stitched together, but I also had to be cautious of the prevailing winds. I had to make sure they were coming out of the east and not the west in case there was a failure of the aircraft, it wouldn't blow it onto the turnpike and hit a vehicle. This is the village of Citrus Grove, and there's more of the Southern Oaks Golf Course here. Again, no water before, but lots of water now. And of course, with water comes alligators and a bunch of other slimy things that crawl on their belly and have teeth. If you look carefully in both pictures, there's the WVLG antenna, and you can see the strobe flashing on the top of it. This 40-acre slab of asphalt and concrete is the Duke Energy substation, 
I know there's a lot of people that are upset in Citrus Grove because it got so big. But it was there when you bought your house. And uh, what did you think they were going to put? A basketball court on that? Nope. This was going to be a power station and always would be. Let's move now to the Lake County side. And this is where the Villages of West Lakes is at. Previously, we had been looking at the Villages of Southern Oaks. Of course, those names have gone away. They were just early construction names. We're now looking at the village of Newell. And if you look carefully, you see a bunch of round patterns in the screen on the left. That's the old spray field that they bought from the city of Leesburg. Can you tell us what you like about your new hearing instruments? I've been coming to Renaissance for five years. I just got my second set of hearing aids. They're Bluetooth. I get my phone calls through it. I get my music through them. I love them. This triangular shaped section on the left is now the golf course on the right. This was actually about 30 feet of that rich red clay that they use for drainage control that they cut down out of this section and a lot of it was transported over to the village of Richmond. There was also a cell phone tower that was in the area that was part of the golf course that was taken down and moved over to the Oak Hollow area. We'll see that in just a few minutes. Now we're looking at the village of Lake Denham, and on the left you can see more of the circular patterns from the old spray field. I've been doing these then and now segments regularly for about the last year, and I'm still amazed every time I look at the comparisons on how much things have changed. Unbelievable how much work they have to put into doing this. And now we're coming up on the County Road 470 Turnpike Interchange. This interchange will soon be widened to four lanes. I hope you've enjoyed this Then and Now segment. Look for more Then and Now segments in future videos. Since we're down at this end, let's take a look at the village of Dabney and the Enclave. This is the Dabney Recreation Area and Postal Station. You can see the pickleball courts are in wool use. And as is typical, the tennis courts are once again empty. We're going to get a little bit of altitude. We're going to fly along the north edge of Dabney and take a look south. Along the top edge of the screen is Lake Denham and the Enclave. We'll get back to the Enclave in just a minute. So in Dabney, there's a big push to get all the homes built and on the market. Now, some people online at Talk of the Villages and a few other places are saying, oh, it's the demise of the villages. Home sales are down 23%. Well, I got news for you. They just came off of two record-setting years post-COVID. Yes, they were profiting from the COVID boom and people moving from the north down into the south where taxes are a little bit better and the freedoms are a lot better. They're now down to about 3,000 homes last year, which still puts them right in the middle of where they've been for the last 20 years in building. So there's not a huge turndown. It's just returning to normal. So why the big push in Dabney? because they're divided right now. They're in two locations. They're in the Moultrie Creek area, and now they're in Dabney. It's easier for the workers, and it's more efficient for them to all be in one location. So as is typical, they push through at the end at each of the developments, and they'll grab some inventory. And yes, they have quite a bit of inventory right now, but they will move it. They always do. This is the wetlands area owned by the city of Leesburg that's between the enclave that you see here and coming into view, Dabney. So this will never be developed. We'll take another quick look at the Dabney recreation area and then we'll move on to the enclave. This is Lake Denham. This is the lake that's just north of the Enclave. However, there's city-owned property between the Enclave and Lake Denham, so there is no access to Lake Denham. The retention ponds in the Enclave are unlined, so they're designed for the water to drain out. So these retention ponds will probably be dry most of the time, and that's supported by the amount of landscaping you see inside the basin area of each of these retention ponds. If you're not familiar with the Enclave, it opened up a couple of months ago. It's the first premier home community that they've done in the last five or six years. They're also allowing designer homes. 
The big difference between these lots and the rest of the lots in the villages is their size. They are much larger than most lots in the villages. Right now, most of the lots available are in the forty to $80,000 range, and there's three lots that are view lots on the peripheral of the development, and they range between eighty dollars and $100,000. Some of these homes in the enclave have already closed, and many of them are having secondary construction work done on them, things like putting blinds in and magic stairs, and some of the other stuff that, that people typically do. They are, however, going to be faced with the prospect of construction going on for several more months. I've spoken to some of the new owners, and some of them aren't overly thrilled with their design choices that they were given. Pretty much zero. Very few changes are being allowed by the developer. I personally think that that's a big mistake on the developer's part. I think they're going to lose out on a lot of changes to the homes that they could have made a profit on that somebody else is going to make a profit on in the secondary construction market. These lack of changes is a big 180 from what it was two years ago when pretty much anything goes and they were allowing all kinds of changes. They know their business better than anybody else. I'm sure they have their reasons. I certainly don't understand them. Will this be the last set of premier homes they build? Who knows, but I don't think so. Let's head back up north just a little bit, and we'll take a look at a couple of other sites that are under construction. So this is Station 46 on Warm Springs Avenue, halfway between Marsh Bend and the entrance to Finney. This station is being built to reduce the distance between fire stations to the two and a half mile radius that the villages likes to maintain. Previously, that goal was being met with the Coleman Fire Station being close to Hammock at Finney. However, with the advent of the Villages Public Safety Dependent District, that all changed. This is the proposed location for a new Wawa gas station. This is the corner of US 301 and State Road 44. After I get up to a high enough altitude, I'll show you the outline of the lot. This shaded area is the approximate location of the lot for the Wawa. There's going to be an entrance on US 301 as well as one on State Route 44. This intersection is already being reworked and the new traffic lights are up. There's also a second Wawa going in on County Route 466A and Powell Road. I'll show you that in just a minute. This is State Route 44 in front of Lake Deaton Plaza. Right next to this bank, last time I showed you a fifth third bank going in. And at this location next to the bank, is going to be a Dunkin' Donuts. Hi, I'm Jeff Monash with Village Air Filters. Are you tired of wasting money on throwaway paper air filters? I can save you money with my lifetime permanent washable air filters. Just buy it once and never buy another air filter again. Rinse it out and then just slide it right back in. My filters are custom made in the U.S. and they have a lifetime warranty. Give me a call at 352-388-1230 or visit my website at villageairfilters.com. Now let's do a couple of more shorts, this time up by Trailwinds. Our first short is looking at the target location. They're making progress. They're still working on the land, but it is making some headway. Next, we're coming up on the location for Outback Steakhouse. In this shot, they were getting ready to pour the foundation. And this large open field is where Ashley Furniture is supposed to go. Here we see work going on on the new Mr. Car Wash car wash. Well, that's a little redundant, but then so is this Mr. Car Wash because there's already two car washes on this same road. As I pull in a little bit closer, we'll look down into the work and you can see the chain pole that they're putting in to move the cars through the Mr. Car Wash car wash. This is the corner of 466A and Powell Road. In the opposite corner is Panda Express being built.
And on this corner is the other Wawa that I was speaking about earlier. Here we can see the progress on the new CVS. I don't know why they haven't started on the CVS in Magnolia Plaza. I haven't been able to figure that one out. All I know is it's still on the agenda to be built. They're making good progress on the new Home Depot on the right. They're also making quick work of the exterior merchandise yard. For whatever reason, this drone does not like to show you the orange color of the stripe. It likes to make it more of a red. I gotta look into recalibrating that camera, I guess. I'll turn around so you can get a better look of the area where this is located. The gold dome building at the top of the image is where the public library is, the county offices are, the tax collector, and a bunch of other offices. So this is a new one I just discovered. That's the temporary road for Central Parkway to connect to 470. And up ahead, where McNeil Drive will cross 470, is where Fire Station 49 is going to be located. This is where it's located on the map. This furthers that goal of putting a fire station within two and a half miles of every home for the villages of Newell, Lake Denham, and Dabney. Now we're going to move to the south and take a look at Moultrie Creek and Middleton. This is the small park area that's right in front of the New Villages High School. We'll fly up and rotate around, get a quick look at the high school before we make our trip around the downtown Middleton area. There's the high school. And we'll fly around in this light colored lot. This is where they're going to be building a new hotel. The building coming into view is the Miner Building, that's the name of it. And the upstairs is supposed to be office space, the downstairs, nobody really knows yet, or at least nobody is saying. To the right of the Miner Building in this open lot is going to be a building called the Plaza. It's the yellow building on the little map that you see. After doing some digging and finding some online resources, this appears to be a supermarket of some sort. Probably not a Publix or a Winn-Dixie, more like a Walmart neighborhood market. The size and shape of the building is similar to that of the neighborhood Walmart over by Colony. But it's the size and the layout of the parking lot, in my opinion, that gives it all away. This is the Citizens First Bank on the right, and the small coffee shop at the top, right across the street from the Gatton Bean Building. While they've announced a lot of different things coming here, the only thing certain right now for location is where the coffee shop is, Citizens First Bank, and the Four Rivers Barbecue Place. There are currently six main buildings under construction, and they all look like they're in the drying in stage, as air conditioning has been established. There are three more scheduled to go over here where we're flying. There's another one that's already started on the southeast corner. So there's quite a bit of building here. As far as when it will open, the current estimates I've seen are sometime late during this year. In the gap between these two buildings on the right, where this red car is at, they're supposed to be putting in a splash area for the kids. This will be something similar to what they have at Downtown Disney and other places. I'll come back around the front now. We get another look at this little entertainment pavilion that's being built. And then we'll rotate around and get another good look at the front of the school. This traffic circle is the intersection of Landstone Boulevard and Barr Boulevard. You can see the ball field from the high school on the right. This open field in the upper left-hand corner is where a church is going. This is the new Street of Dreams. We'll get a closer look at that in just a minute. We're going to take a nice fly around Moultrie Creek and look at the work going on there. You can see there's courtyard villas up here by the recreation area and postal station, as well as two groups of homes being built across the street from it. 
the one on the right being veranda homes, the one on the left, regular designer homes. On the other side of this little pond, you can see more veranda homes going up. This area we're flying over now is scheduled to be commercial. I'm not sure exactly what. It's kind of an unusual setting. It's sitting on the water, which really kind of throws things off because that's really prime home real estate. But they obviously have some sort of plan for this area. One of the things that's obvious in this area, and has been obvious for the last year, is the increased use of the tilt wall or prefab walls for the homes. Obviously, the DZ plant over in the Rick Scott Industrial Park has really stepped up production. The row of foundations near the top of the screen is patio villas. The main advantage of the tilt wall construction is a reduction in manpower that it takes to get the walls up, but there really is no savings in time because those walls take about the same as a block wall to put up. After that, the construction schedule is almost identical. The advantage to the homeowner is a very strong wall and a very tight envelope for the home. As we rotate around, we'll get a look at the construction going on on fire station number 48. Last video I said 38. My mistake. Sorry about that. This is 48. 49 is the one being built farther down the road. We'll rotate back around. This is the village of Shady Brook. It's progressing quickly. We'll continue to rotate around and we'll get a look at the Seleucus Recreation Center. And yes, now it does have a pool. Came along very quickly. And yes, last time I did call it DeLucas. My mistake. I definitely made a couple of mistakes in the last video. And not surprisingly, there were several out there quick to point out my mistakes. Looking for that perfect Murphy bed for your bonus room? Look no further. We offer three things. Best quality, best service, best warranty in the industry, bar none. Give us a call, set up an appointment, 612-598-3303, murphyoffice.com. Here we can see more patio villas that have been built. As they've been finishing up over in the village of Dabney, Things have really ramped up here on the construction of spec homes, as well as on the construction of some of the custom-built homes. If you're building a custom home in the village of Moultrie Creek, and you want to be able to chronicle the progress nearly every day, or you just need somebody to watch after things as you go back up north and get ready to move here to the villages, go to my website, goldwingnut.com, or give me a call and arrange a custom video and photo package for your home. The near section of this group of homes up ahead are in very loop, and most of these are custom-built homes. As we rotate around, we'll get a nice view of the recreation area and pool and postal station for the village of Moultrie Creek, as well as some very unique courtyard villas that stick out into this wetlands area. As you can see, in Moultrie Creek, things are really going full steam ahead with home building as they move their focus to this area of the villages. We'll do a short flyover over the Street of Dreams. The Street of Dreams is all model homes. Each of these homes, it appears to be a different model. There's a sign out in front of them that shows what model it is. And they're all, from what I understand, decorated on the interior. There are three parking lots here. You can see them coming up where you can go into the model homes and offices. The home at the top of the screen with the four doors in place of a garage door is where T&D Pools has their office set up. It was just announced earlier this week that the old Street of Dreams in Brownwood will now be converted over to office space for the district office as many of the key elements of the district offices move farther south to be closer to the middle of the villages. There will still be parts of the office, though, in Lake Sumter Landing. This isn't the first time they've created a Street of Dreams like this, and they've moved it many times over the years. But it's probably safe to say, with the focus on this area of the villages, for the next several years, this one's going to be here for a while, or at least until the models significantly change. This is the pro shop and restaurant for the Shallow Creek Country Club. The restaurant is going to be called Boosters, and it pays tribute to the athletic programs at the village's school system. Unlike the other country clubs throughout the villages, the plans for Shallow Creek do not show a swimming pool or tennis courts, so it seems to me that that might be being phased out in future country clubs. They haven't completed drying in the building envelope, and they haven't set the air conditioning units yet, so interior work has not started. Maybe some rough-in work, but that's about it. So it's going to be a while before this is done. The last word I heard was sometime in spring this would be opening. I would expect late spring, probably closer to early summer. That would also be consistent with the current state of growth of the course.
Next up, we're going to look at the village of Wellpoint, Oak Hollow, and of course, Eastport. We start out heading north along Marsh Bend Trail. You can see a bit of the multimodal path that's being roughed in. And this is the development going on near the village of McClure. Look at how tightly packed these apartments are. Holy mackerel. No thank you very much. My mom taught me if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. So I'm done. We'll take another look at the multimodal path and of course the extension of Marsh Bend Trail that the county's been working on. The county is just about done with their work, so it won't be long until this is open. As you can see, they've started putting in the landscaping along Marsh Bend Trail. The day I shot this, they were putting in the flowers along the median. We're heading south now, and Marsh Bend Trail is on the far right. This is the village of Oak Hollow. You can see that they've started on the roads and laying out the lots. And we're going to rotate a little bit to the left, and we get our first look at the Oak Hollow Golf Course. You can see that they've cut in the fairways, the tee boxes, and the greens, and of course the sand traps. And of course there's no shortage of water on this course. There never is. As we move to the east, we see the village of Edenfield. Yes, last time I screwed it up, and I called it Enfield. Again, people were quick to point it out to me, and I appreciate it. We'll rotate back a little bit to the north, and we'll head towards where they're building the San Tropez Recreation Center. There's still a tremendous amount of work going on in this area. I've been asked several times in the last few weeks, when are they going to open up Corbin Trail to McNeil Drive so that golf carts can go up and down this area and shorten the trip? Well, I'm sorry to say, but it looks like it's going to be a couple of more months. The focus has been down at Moultrie Creek and Shady Brook, and not so much up here. With all the heavy work going on with the golf course and the village of Edenfield, it's definitely going to be a while longer. Don't expect for it to open up until they actually start selling homes and lots in this area. Remember, everything that opens that's new is all driven by home sales. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is a business. You knew what the conditions were when you bought your home and nothing else was guaranteed in your contract. Now we're traveling north in the southern part of the village of Oak Hollow with Marsh Bend Trail being on our left. We'll rotate around and we'll get another good look at the Oak Hollow golf course that's being built. As we head south, we're flying into the village of LaGrange, and we'll go down towards the one kilometer long lake, and we'll turn and go take a look at Eastport. In LaGrange, you can see they're putting in the deep utilities. This is the stormwater pipes and the water mains. The road coming into view on the left side of the screen and heading towards the top of the screen is Corbin Trail. As we rotate back towards Eastport, you can see the Farragut ball fields at the top of the screen. Coming into view now is the Dragon Boat Dock and Sunset Island. And we'll zoom in and we'll take a look at the buildings under construction. The building farthest ahead is Building 12. That's the new sales office. I'm 99% sure of that. And to the left is the Olympia Recreation Center. Hi, fellow villagers. It's Steve from Gold Shield Cart Alarms. Unfortunately, golf cart thefts are a growing concern here in the villages. I offer an affordable solution. Our golf cart alarms are easy to operate, <coughs> maintenance-free, and are an effective deterrent. Call me or visit our website. Protect your investment. Gold Shield Cart Alarms. This is the Bell Air Executive Golf Course. And as you can see, they're doing lots of layout work here. They're also putting in the utility mains in the village of Lakeside. We've still got one more segment to go, but before we get to it, I wanted to encourage you, please support my sponsors. Without their help, these videos simply would not be possible. It takes a lot of time and expense to produce these videos, and my sponsors help me make ends meet. With what I make from these videos, if I were to pay myself out of that, I would be guilty of slave labor in every country in the world. For me, this is a passion. 
trying to bring to you good factual information about what's going on here in the villages. All right, this is our last segment. The black plastic you see here is for the sand pits for the beach activities that are planned for this area. The triangular area just beyond this parking lot that's coming into view is for a dog park. We'll take another quick view of Sunset Island and the work going on there, then we'll rotate around and get a look at the Olympia Recreation Center and Building 12, the Sales Center. This is a much better view than the last one, and you can see there's a lot happening here. A lot of the parking lots are also done here in Eastport. Along this long stretch of wall on the waterfront is where the Eastport Hotel will be built. We'll rotate around and you can see the area where the entertainment stage is going to be. We'll fly back to where we started from and we'll get another look at the Farragut softball fields as the work continues on them. And on the far side of the softball fields, we'll see a bunch of rolls of plastic. This is the plastic that they use to line our retention ponds to keep the water from draining out so quickly. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video today. I hope you have enjoyed it. As it is Super Bowl Sunday, a little football analogy is in order. For those of us living here, we're in the fourth quarter of the game, and it's safe to say that we've probably won the game at this point. So now it's time to enjoy this fourth quarter, enjoy life to its fullest, and if we're lucky, we'll get a little bit of overtime out of the game also. Until next time, I'm Don Wiley. Have a great day.